Archaeology studies how people lived in the past. It tells us how they lived in and with the landscape that surrounded them. In the Carib project, we look at how people lived in the Lesser Antilles. The last thousand years was a time of many changes. Humans lived in and moved between the islands. Each time new people arrived, they brought their own ideas and beliefs. When Europeans and Africans came, new materials were also introduced. Archaeology reconstructs history from the little objects that remained buried in the ground. This film is about how we look at the Antilles from a thousand years ago. We study the objects, the materials that the people then left behind. Ceramics. But what exactly is a ceramic? Everyone knows mud. If you step in a puddle, mud sticks to your shoes and clothes. This is because minerals in the mud are small and look like tiny plates. They're called clays. Water attaches itself to clay plates and makes mud soft and sticky. Not all minerals in mud are clays. Mud is a mixture of many different minerals. The more clay minerals present, the stickier the mud becomes. When you leave mud in the sun, it dries. The heat evaporates the water between the tiny plates of clay. The mud becomes dry and hard, but you can still break it apart with your hands. You can heat mud in an open fire or kiln. At higher temperatures, clay will melt and connect to each other. A network of fused molten clay will make the mud very hard. It is now a very hard material, tough to break by hand. Now you have a ceramic. So, you can heat clay at high temperatures to make a ceramic. But why is a ceramic useful? Wet mud with many clays is soft and sticky. You can shape it into many forms. In a kiln, you can fire the shaped mud. In this way, you can make useful ceramics, like plates or cups. The oldest ceramic objects were small statues used in rituals. They're nearly 30,000 years old. They were found in the Czech Republic. The oldest pottery is baked clay in the form of pots, cups and plates. This is found all over the world from about 20,000 years ago. The first ceramic pots were made using sausages of clay called coils. These were bent and stacked by hand to build a pot. Later on, lumps of clay were shaped on a potter's wheel. As soon as it is shaped, clay can be dried and fired. Ceramic is still made today. We still make the same objects from bricks and tiles to cups and plates. Clay can be made into many useful things, but why do we study ceramics? Clay is found everywhere, so ceramic can be made all over the world. For thousands of years, humans have made objects from fired clay. Many of these were for daily use, such as cooking. Others were for rituals or special occasions, such as burials. All these objects could be made and used locally. The shape given to a ceramic is often typical of the place that it was made. It is a typical style for certain people in a specific place, a bit like fashion today. Since they're easy to carry, ceramics can be moved. They can be exchanged for other goods or taken on travels. We can analyse from which clay an object was made. Then we also know where it was made. If a ceramic is not found in the place that it was made, it was moved. This also allows us to see from where and possibly with whom an object travelled. It is these findings that archaeologists use to unravel history. How and why has this pot moved from one island to another? Or maybe the clay to make the pot was transported? In the Carib project, we look at many different islands in the Lesser Antilles. We reconstruct which ceramic was made where and when. We compare ceramics and clays. In this way, we can see how ceramic travelled. We can also see how people interacted. 
Using scientific analysis, we can reconstruct how and where ancient objects were made. The life cycle of these objects, such as ceramics, can tell us a lot about how ancient people lived. In this way, science and archaeology work together to teach us more about our past.